captive rings like this are something that I know turners love to do. It provides great bragging rights. I've got this one incorporated into the handle of my shot mallet, and I love showing it to my woodworking buddies when they come over. On a smaller scale, I've got a captive ring on this pen I turned. Pretty cool there, too. Same process, just a little bit more delicate here. Let me show you how you make a captive ring on a spindle turning. The first step on your turning, once it's been made round, is to form a bead. That bead is what's going to become your captive ring. Once the bead has been formed, the next step is to reduce the diameter on each side of it. Our goal is to get to a point where we can undercut this. So now I'm going to go from a skew to a gouge so that I can get some of the material on each side of that captive ring taken away. With this being hollowed like it is, now the next step is to go back to my skew again and I'll start undercutting a little bit from each side. You want to be very conservative with your cuts so that you don't shatter this bead that we created here. Now what you want to do with your skew as you're making these cuts is listen to it and you'll hear as that wall gets thinner and thinner the pitch go up and that's going to give you a clue that that ring is about to come loose. So now it's loose on there but it's still kind of grabbing. All you need to do to let it move freely is reduce the diameter a little bit of the material underneath it.
with the wood underneath cleaned up, now you've got a donut sitting right in the middle of your spindle turning. Remember with your captive ring that once it's cut free, you really can't get sanding or finishing done on this. So you want to do that work right before it pops loose. Now you know how to make a captive ring.